Hi, I'm Patrick Krupka. I'm a chiropractor and a nutritionist, and I run a functional medicine practice here in Houston, Texas. On today's video, we're going to be going over something called leaky gut, but let me tell you why we're going to be talking about it, and, and it's not quite as gross as it sounds. Um, in a functional medicine practice, you spend a lot of your time dealing with patients who have inflammatory conditions. And as a functional medicine practitioner, we look for the causes of inflammation. And there is a huge list of what can cause inflammation, uh, especially when you're talking about systemic inflammation. One of the things on that list, one of the conditions, one of the situations on that list that can cause systemic inflammation is leaky gut. So what I'm going to do today is go through the basic mechanics of, of leaky gut and how your intestinal function can affect everything from arthritis to brain fog to autoimmune problems, okay? So we're gonna go through this step by step so you understand it. Most of you that have some kind of inflammatory condition, as, you, as you've gotten online and started researching what you've been diagnosed with, you'll come across, in a lot of cases, some reference to leaky gut, but it doesn't always really do a good job of explaining what that is. So let me go through this for you. First, as you know, I always do, I'm gonna orient you to what I've drawn out here. And as you can tell, I'm not an artist. I apologize in advance, but hopefully this is clear enough that you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. So down here, this tube down here represents the intestinal tract. You see, you've got stool moving through it there. Up here, you've got the bloodstream. This is a blood vessel. In between the two, you've got the gut lining. All right, these cells are called enterocytes. This lining is roughly one cell thick. And its job is to be what's called a semi-permeable membrane. It is supposed to allow some things from your intestines to pass through the cells and into the bloodstream, but keep everything else out. So nutrients and water and minerals and things like that should be allowed through. But bacteria and undige undigested proteins and things like that are left in the stool. Okay, that's the job of these cells. So first I'm gonna talk about these two cells here. These are normal enterocytes. Now, they've got all kinds of stuff inside of them that I didn't draw here because we're not really concerned with that today. The first thing I wanna talk about are these little projections down here. These are called villi. And on those you have microvilli, which are basically villi again, but they're villi on the villi. We call those microvilli. Now the purpose of those is to increase the surface area of the intestinal tract. Right, so let's say we have two feet of intestine represented here. It's not, but let's say it is. That would give you two feet worth of surface area, right? The, the, whatever the circumference of that tube is, you'd have two feet worth of it to, to absorb nutrients. But when you add all these little villi and microvilli, it exponentially increases the amount of surface area that you have. The average adult has almost the surface area equal to a full-size tennis court. So that's a massive surface area with which we can absorb nutrients and water and all of that stuff. But that's also a huge risk if, if something like this happens. You can tell these two cells obviously are different than these. We'll talk about the differences in a minute. When something like this happens, that, that large surface area increases the risk that something's going to go wrong. Presumably in response to that risk, about 70% of your immune system surrounds the intestinal tract. And that's called GALT, G-A-L-T, or gut-associated lymphoid tissue. That means that anytime this system gets disrupted, there's a significant stimulation of your immune system. That's where the systemic inflammation comes from. And it's a protective response, it needs to happen, but we need to control how often it's triggered. So let's talk a little bit about the normal cells and how they function. So there's food in the stool. Hopefully you've digested it well in the stomach. Now, this is not a digestion video, but let me briefly say digestion starts in the mouth. You chew your food. Hopefully you chew your food. Most of us don't, but hopefully you do. So while you're chewing your food, your saliva mixes with it, you're creating some, some secretory antibodies in there, you're tagging the foods, you're starting to recognize what's happening, and that sends a signal to your stomach to start the digestive process. Then you swallow the food, the stomach's ready for it, and you continue digesting it. Once it's digested in the stomach, it moves into the small intestines, where we add bicarbonate to it to get rid of the acidity from the stomach, and we add bile to it to start to emulsify the fats. That moves through the small intestine, starts to get acted upon by some bacteria, then eventually it moves into the large intestines, and that's, that's well, we're talking some small, some large intestines here. 
But that's kind of where we're picking up in here. We're assuming the upper part of the digestive tract has done its job appropriately. That's it's a different video. All right, so we have digested food moving through here, and let's, let's say digested proteins for a minute. Digested proteins break down into blocks of one or two amino acids. Um, the, way I, the way I explain this to patients, if you have ever played with Legos as a child, or if you have children that play with Legos, the standard rectangular Lego block, the basis of all the Lego blocks, let's say that's an amino acid. If you stack 70 or 80 of those up together, then you've got an organized protein, a fairly decent sized protein. You're only supposed to absorb chunks of probably two amino acids or less then your body knows it's a nutrient. If it's more than two amino acids, your body's not going to necessarily recognize that as a nutrient. It may think that's an invader, like a bacteria, um, a yeast, a, a parasite, something along those lines. Now, so let's say you have one or two little amino acid chunks floating along in here, and they come in contact with these villi. Well, these villi have a mechanism by which they can take those in, and they move through the cell. And as they move through the cell, they're getting processed and they're getting recognized, kind of like coming into the country. You show your papers and you get recognized. And yes, you're, you're allowed to be here and you have a visa and all that. So you're going through that process. Then, if everything checks out well, it gets released into the bloodstream. Now, once in the bloodstream, the, blood, the cells in the blood recognize that. The lymphatic cells and, the, and the, the immune cells recognize those as amino acids. Those are building blocks of proteins in your body, and they're used in enzymatic processes and all kinds of wonderful things. So they go on through the bloodstream, and they get picked up by cells that need them. Okay? So that's the way it's supposed to work. Same thing happens with minerals and electrolytes and certain vitamins and stuff. They all get brought in through these, these cells in a manner of processing them, um, tagging them, and making sure that they're supposed to be there. Now, these cells are held together here on this border here by what's called tight junctions. Think of a welder coming in and welding these together in several places. And that keeps things from getting between the cells. And that way, everything that gets into the bloodstream has to go through the proper channels and be tagged appropriately. If you have a large chunk of undigested protein in here, let's say you you drank milk and, and had casein and didn't completely break down the casein in the stomach. And, and so as it moves through, you've got chunks of, you know, 14 or 20 or 23 or whatever amino acids, and they're sliding along in here. They should not be able to get through the mechanism in the villi, and so they stay in the intestinal tract. Now, what happens if these cells are not healthy? If something occurred to change the health and functioning of these cells so that they look more like this. These are not happy enterocytes, right? That's what these are called. They're enterocytes, they make up the gut lining. So these two are not happy. Now, in this case, you'll notice the villi are somewhat blunted. That doesn't always happen when they get unhealthy, but in many cases it does. If this happens because of an autoimmune process, it's called celiac disease. Your own immune system is now eating up or blunting or, or destroying these villi. For some reason, it thinks they're invaders and it's going after them. In other conditions, they're like this because of lack of nutrition or some other immune process that's going on. Now, let's say that the, you're dealing with the same couple of amino acids that were supposed to be absorbed. They float along here. Their chances of being taken into the cell are considerably less because you've got a lot less surface area than you have over here. So many of these nutrients are just going to keep on going and you won't absorb those. That can lead to malnutrition or underabsorption of nutrition. In other cases, you'll have those large chunks of nutrient, those, um, like, like the example with, with taking in some casein and not digesting it properly, which is common. So you've got these large chunks of 10, 12, 15, 20 amino acids floating along. Well, what if they scoot between these cells and slip into the bloodstream without ever being tagged or regulated or checked? Well, now when they're in the bloodstream, the immune cells around here all of a sudden recognize, oh my gosh, there's some sort of invader coming in. Now, let me go back to amino acids for a minute because this is an important concept. We don't have an, an endless variety of amino acids to deal with. There are a finite number of amino acids that we use. I'm not going to go into all the details, but for rough numbers, we'll say 20 of them. Now, picture your Legos coming in 20 different colors. So as that protein gets into the bloodstream and the immune cells start to recognize it, they see a pattern of colors, so to speak, or a pattern of amino acids. Now, 
they realize their job is to protect you, they whip out their iPhone and they take a picture of that amino acid sequence and they text it to all their immune cell friends. Right Now everybody's on the same page and it is a search and destroy mission for that amino acid. You have now developed an immune response to a food that you eat. That's largely how food allergies or food sensitivities are developed and that's through the mechanism of leaky gut. They were allowed to get in between the cells instead of going through the cell or being kept out like they should have been. Now, that can also happen with anything that's in this pipeline. Now, remember, this is your intestines. We've all seen what comes out of the other end of that pipeline, and it's not pretty. You do not want what's in your intestines to have free access to your bloodstream. That's not a good thing. It's going to activate the immune system every time you eat, even between meals. You're constantly activating the immune system. You are now increasing your risk for food allergies and food sensitivities, food reactions, um, and autoimmune problems. The mechanism by which this leads to autoimmunity is called molecular mimicry. The molecules coming into the bloodstream and being presented to the immune system in some cases are very similar to what you already have in your body. Take that amino acid sequence, remember they took a picture of it with their iPhone and texted it to their friends. What if you have that same Lego color sequence in one of the proteins already in your body? Whether it's in the thyroid, whether it's lining the nerves, whether it's in the joint tissue, you now have immune cells on a search and destroy mission for a sequence of amino acids that already exist in your body. By the process of what's called molecular mimicry, you now have an autoimmune disorder. Now, once you've developed that, I'm not saying that fixing the leaky gut will cure the autoimmune disorder but fixing the leaky gut can stop triggering the immune system to go looking for those proteins and it can help you get into remission. Now, that's an example of leaky gut. These are the cells that are not happy. You notice that you don't have the tight junctions there. Anything that's in the stool, candida, um, good bacteria, bad bacteria, parasites, undigested proteins, extra medications that, that, you're, that were not absorbed the way they were supposed to be, um, toxins that your liver has gotten rid of, uh, about half of what your liver gets rid of gets thrown into the intestinal tract, those can all seep right back into the bloodstream and then you have to process those all over again or, you, or your immune system has to deal with those. So this can be a significant problem. You always feel like you're under attack, you always feel like you're on the edge of getting sick, your immune system is always overactive in these cases. Now that can lead to everything from ADD and ADHD type symptoms, to hormonal problems, to toxicity symptoms, um, to fatigue and lethargy, to autoimmune problems, you name it, anything that can be associated with um, a general inflammatory condition can be triggered by this. All right, so this is an example of what leaky gut is. Hopefully, my deficient artwork at least helped you understand what I'm talking about, the difference between good cells and, and diseased cells in the intestinal tract and you understand the significance of the risk because of the surface area you have here, the toxic nature of what can reside in here and the importance of only letting nutrients and, and specific materials into the bloodstream to get distributed out to the rest of the body. So that's a discussion of leaky gut. Um, in other discussions we can get into all the different issues that can, that can be affected by this but I wanted to give you the basics on this. So hopefully that made sense to you. As we've done with other videos, please feel free to, li to leave comments below the video um, and ask your questions. Tell me what wasn't clear um, or share the fact that it helped you out, right? Everybody would like to know um, if these videos are, are helping people and are providing information that's important for you. So make your comments, put them below, share it with your friends. Let's get the information out there. If I need to go into more detail on this or clarify something based on your comments, I will certainly come back uh, and do another video and get more in depth in this. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Um, and until I see you on the next video, eat for your health, train for performance, and live the life you love today. Thanks for watching.